ever leave one always. That is the law. If the parents of those eagle eggs could talk, they'd say, get your stinking paws off my eggs, you damn dirty ape. In Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, won a few new movies I'll be reviewing this week on CJ at the Movies, along with some new films starring Jerry Seinfeld and Anne Hathaway, and a restoration on the Beatles documentary, Let It Be. I'm Christopher Zweig. Let's take a look. It takes place centuries after Caesar's death in the last entry, and now we have an evil ape tribe led by Proximus Caesar, played by Kevin Duran, who has twisted the good ape's messages and is looking for the technology to dominate what's left of humanity. Apes will earn high. Will earn. And I will conquer. The new main ape protagonist this time is the chimp Noah, played by Owen Teague, who is part of a tribe that trains eagles, and when the scent of a human gets out, it attracts the attention of the evil apes who attack their village and kidnap the surviving apes. Noah must journey to save his clan and receives unexpected help from a wise orangutan, played by Peter Macon, and a feral human girl, played by Freya Allen. You said this Nova was smarter than most. Within reason. Some intelligence, to be sure. I have a name. May. The most disappointing aspect of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is William H. Macy as a human historian who has to be revealed as a bad guy, and even if we did predict he was one, he doesn't have the kind of edge a previous human antagonist. But it's really the ape villains we're entertained by, especially by Proximus Caesar, and the motion capture effects for the apes are still as captivating as the franchise intends to be. This sequel continues the debate on whether apes and humans can live in such a dystopian world, and it sure is damn good looking and really entertaining. Our next movie is The Idea of You, a smart and sexy romance that stars Anne Hathaway as a single mother who has been cynical about the concept of romance after her ex-husband cheated on her. He was supposed to take their daughter, played by Ella Rubin, to Coachella to meet the music group August Moon, but he cancels at the last minute, and now Hathaway must take her and her friends to the event, and finds herself in the trailer of the lead singer, played by Nicholas Galitzine. It becomes a John Lennon and Yoko Ono story for these two as they fall in love, which becomes quite a challenge considering their big age difference. I'm too old for you. I got not. The Idea of You was directed by Michael Showalter, who has proven to be a filmmaker who gives his characters their challenges and chemistry. Sometimes it can be easy, and other times it can be hard, and it all becomes balanced. And the performances from Halfway and Galit Singh are charming and passionate because of how, in spite of circumstances, they're able to have a chemistry that you can read between the lines and forget what the public would say about them. So check it out! Next up, I saw The TV Glow, a horror movie about two young people who share the same background of abusive stepfathers and a love for a 90s supernatural series known as The Pinko Peg. Justice Smith plays a lonely young man, while Bridget Lundy Payne plays a lesbian whose stars cross, not on a romantic level, but on a nostalgic sense. I've, I've been watching the tapes you've been making me, but I wanted to watch The Pinko Peg on Saturday night again while it airs. I like girls, you know that, right? I'm not into boys. I was in, I was, th th he's, totally, that's fine. Okay, I'm just making sure. Then the girl disappears while the show gets cancelled, and when she comes back, she tells the boy that she was literally inside the show, not during a recording, but actually inside the show. Sometimes the pinko paint feels more real than real life. Maddie, it was a TV show. Are you sure that's all it was? Written and directed by Jane Slowenberm and produced by husband and wife Dave McRae and Emma Stone, I Saw the TV Glow is a strange and weirdly effective movie that shows us two troubled characters and their connections to one bizarre teen series. And the performances from Smith and Lundy Payne are mesmerizing in their own respective ways of viewing their realities and what are supposed to be fantasies. Even though the last 20 minutes are too overwhelming for me to handle, I still enjoy this movie for playing like an A24 version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Okay, I want to make an important distinction because Jerry Seinfeld is one of my all-time favorite comedians and his sitcom Seinfeld is one of the funniest shows of all time. But our next movie on Frosted, which is Seinfeld's feature directorial debut taken from one of his jokes about the creation on the popular Kellogg's breakfast pastry known as the Pop-Tart, is one of the worst comedies I have ever seen. We are go for launch. Minus three, two, one, lift off. I believe we have split the atom of breakfast. 
He plays a Kellogg's businessman going against Post representative Marjorie Post, played by Amy Schumer, and enlists the assistance of a NASA scientist, played by Melissa McCarthy, to take breakfast on a new level. Then normally fine talents like Hugh Grant, James Marsden, and Jim Gaffigan appear in the mix, and you also get probably the least inspired Mad Men cameos with John Hamm and John Slattery reprising their roles. You know we're a kid cereal company, right? If that's all you want to be. I've been in your town for six hours, you know what I see? Dead trees and sad, lonely women. I mean, the choice is yours. Raisin brand and irrelevant, or provocative and revolutionary. Who notices dead trees? Shut up, Herman. Genius at work. The sitcom Seinfeld is hilarious because of how it contains silly humor that TV viewers can relate to or make fun of in their spare time, and because of some of its politically correct or incorrect situations, and all of it still holds up today. Unfrosted is a sophomoric movie that relies on so many unfunny gags and wacky characters and almost reminds you of how bad Rob Reiner's North was 30 years ago. Jerry Seinfeld can still be funny today, but his new movie feels like an SNL skit gone horribly wrong. But here's something that goes horribly right. I, I mean, right. Sorry. It's The Beatles Let It Be, the 1970 documentary which barely found a home release video in the 1980s and a few bootleg copies, but finally, after all these years, a newly restored version has been released on Disney+, Plus, and it looks and feels great. What starts off as a concert becomes a documentary as we see The Beatles rehearsing for what became their 12th and final album, Let It Be. Let it be. The restoration makes this doc look and feel riveting, and time has been very kind to this footage. Nothing is tainted, and it feels like a new movie was produced. The Beatles Let It Be deserves to be shown for Beatles fans young and old, and I'm glad we're given another chance to see it. Recapping this week's new movies, thumbs up for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, thumbs way up for The Idea of You, thumbs up for I Saw the TV Glow, thumbs way down for Unfrosted, and thumbs way up for The Beatles Let It Be. Well, those are the new movies I'm reviewing this week. I'm Christopher Zweig. Stay safe, and I'll see you at the movies. For more amazing content, please like and subscribe to my channels, and please read my reviews at cjatthemovies.com and download the new HD Radio app.